to another episode of The Heart of the Matter. On this episode, we'd be marking six years of bringing you The Heart of the Matter. And, and this is about our 150th episode. And joining me on today's segment are, are two people who will be hosting The Heart of the Matter alongside me from now on. Sometimes they'll be hosting them by themselves. Sometimes they'll be hosting the, the program together with me. Let me introduce them to you. First of all is Mrs. Omilolao Shikoya. Um, you're welcome to the Heart of the Matter. Thank you. And then we have Miss Susan Abebe. Welcome to the Heart of the Matter. Thank you very much. Um, Omi, and I'm going to call you Omi from now on. Welcome. Tell us a bit about yourself. Um, be one, it's a mouthful. Um, I'm a wife and mother of two. I'm also a, um, a life coach. I also what is a life coach? A life coach is basically someone that helps you get from where you are to where you want to be. Okay. So similar to having a coach for a football team. So you have a coach that helps you achieve some of your goals in life. Okay, here's a tough question. A coach for a football team is an expert at football. <laughs> so don't you have to be an expert at life? to be a life coach? Um, not necessarily. Um, the, the, the key thing is I would be cheering you on, I'll be motivating you, and I'll provide some sort of accountability so you know that every time we meet, we have to um, have achieved some of your goals. So it just sort of um, gives you a push because some people need that push to um, reach certain um, goals or achieve certain things in life. Okay. So, viewers, with Omi, you will reach your destiny because that's the that's that's her <laughs> bent in the heart of the matter susan over to you yes what tell us about yourself um i was born in england raised in england and um, i've studied in both the uk and in america um i'm an expert in the media field i write i produce what sort I, of stuff do you write <laughs> i write news segments um so okay. headline news entertainment news okay. um and i've also had a few um you know, skits in front of the camera as well. Okay. So. so, so you're at home yes, in front of the camera. I am. <laughs> okay, tell us a little bit more about Susan. What is Susan bringing to the heart of the matter? Um, I think I'm bringing um, a new voice, a younger voice, um, a new generation. Um, we're going to be going into the field and actually, um, you know, experiencing, I guess, our viewers' lives and bringing it to the rest of the world. So I'm going to be doing more field reporting as well as you know, sitting here with you. Okay, back to you, Omi. Um, you're a life coach, you're a writer, yes. you're a writer as well. Yes. What sort of stuff do you write? Um, currently I have a blog, uh, okay. it's called Pocket Finance, so it's a personal and business finance column, a blog. I provide advice to, um, I talk about four things basically, how to create wealth, how to manage wealth how to grow wealth and how to use wealth. I also write, I'm a columnist for a newspaper and a contributor for an international magazine. If I gave you 30 seconds and said, what is the biggest financial problem that most people have, what would you say it is? Biggest financial problem is, I think people think um, they need to have a lot of money before they start investing. So mm -hmm. they, they keep saying, oh, when I make this amount of money, then I can invest. But I think the, the, or, um, I think the, the issue is starting small. It's important to start small, start now. And also another thing people tend to think is um, the same thing. When I have enough money, then I'll be able to invest. But it's not necessarily how much you earn, it's how much you spend. Okay. So you are an investor yourself? Yes, I am. Good. Because you can't <laughs> ask people to invest if you're not an investor yes, yourself. Yes. Well, we'll be back in a moment, viewers, with as we continue with this episode of The Heart of the Matter. Stay tuned to us. Back in a moment. Matter. 
Um, Pastor, I'm going to ask you a few questions. And the first one is, why the heart of the matter? What is the vision behind the, the talk show? The heart of the matter? Yes. Well, for most people who watch television, especially in Nigeria, you, you get churches do a lot of preaching. Okay. And that's good because people are getting to hear the word of God. But, but what we wanted to do with the heart of the matter was to bring practical life situations. Let's okay. see how people can, can solve their real life problems. So we've had episodes that have dealt with fertility, episodes that have dealt with some of the childhood uh, 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 sicknesses like autism, mm -hmm. cerebral palsy. Um, so our objective was to, to talk about um, stuff that people come up against every day. Okay, that's interesting. So what's the desired impact on your viewers? Then? Well, first of all, we want to bring information to them. Okay. We want them to know um, what help is available if they, if they have challenges and okay. problems. That's, that's the first thing we want to do. And then we want, them, we want to encourage them to do things themselves. I mean, we had one guy on this uh, program uh, some, a couple of years ago okay. who went around Lagos and was getting people that we call mad off the street uh, and, mm -hmm. and taking them for help and rehabilitation. Um, and, and so a viewer watching that episode would know that you know, don't, don't get uh, the police to throw him in, in a cell or something. Exactly. Call this guy. He'll come and take him away, and you can be sure that they'll do as much as they can mm -hmm. to help rehabilitate the person. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So 150 episodes. What's your most remarkable story? I don't think I have one remarkable episode. I mean, what I can say is I have learned a lot from almost every episode that we've had. I didn't know a thing about cerebral palsy or autism. Um, and uh, I remember one episode we had um, uh, Mrs. Fumi Oyetunji who uh, talked about financial freedom. Mm. And she had such uh, depth to what she was sharing that, uh, you, you know, I have learned a lot. And if I have learned a lot, then the viewers certainly have had the opportunity to learn quite mm. a lot from their program mm. as well. We've, we've talked about Nollywood. We had Dakore on one of our first episodes, and, and um, you know, we talked about Nollywood. We've talked about a wide variety of subjects. And I think the most important thing for me is the learning. Um, and and um, as I said, that's what we want to do for our viewers. We want our viewers to see what's happening and to realize that there are Nigerians who are ready to, to sacrifice their time, their money, so as to be a help to other people. This is not something that, that's only common to foreigners. Nigerians do it as well. You know, that's one of the things we wanted to get across. Interesting. Mine is, I think, the um, Bethesda School for the Blind. Um, watching that episode it just made me um, realize that I'm actually really blessed. And, you know, sometimes you you sit down and you worry or you think about your problem but looking at the challenges others are facing and how they're still happy how they're still motivated and you know they're grateful for life it makes you think you know and it was very inspiring to watch that episode now i, I remember joshua his father watched an episode that was dealing with cerebral palsy and joshua was born with a birth defect that that, that presented just like cerebral palsy. So his father got in touch with, with the heart of the matter and wanted to know how he could reach the, the fellow who started an NGO to help people who had children with cerebral palsy. And uh, we got involved. Uh, we sent him for, for, for uh, medical investigations to find out if, if it indeed was cerebral palsy and they discovered it wasn't. Uh -huh. I think during the birth, it was a difficult birth, and they had to use a forceps, and he got some brain damage from that. Wow. Okay? But as a result of that, we, we brought him to church and invited our members to, to help him because his mother had run away after he was born, mm -hmm. and the father had no one else to rely on, sometimes had to leave him on his own. This boy was five years old, on his own at home. He couldn't really walk and all that and, and go off to, to, to work himself. So... Um, at the end of the day, the church raised over a million naira. Um, 
he's, he's got into a special school. So Joshua is at school, somebody funded that. Wow. We've been able to get his father one of those tricycles. So he has his own little transport business. So those are some of the things that happen when people watch uh, the heart of the matter and, and get in touch with us. I'm looking forward to, I'm excited to be part of this. Yes, I'm sure. I mean, mm. it, it will be, I'm, I'm sure you'll have a lot of fun on, on the program. Welcome back to the heart of the matter. We're going to shift gears now and talk about the negative perceptions of the church. I have personally encountered, you know, many negative perceptions. Um, I've heard that people think the church is judgmental, it's hypocritical. Um, some people believe it's an organized religion. Um, so what are your thoughts on some of these perceptions? Well, I, I would like you to develop those perceptions as well. What, what, okay. what, what exactly do people mean by the church is judgmental? Let's talk about that. So. I feel like, for example, I've heard that people who are confused by their sexuality, for, you know, for example, think they can't come to church because they'll be, you know, shunned upon or looked down on. So, and there are some people who, I know in America, growing up in America, people have, would stand on the pavement and hold signs up and it's a very extreme tactic. So. Well, if you talk about sexuality, that's yeah. a whole different ball game, which yeah. I, th I think we need a whole program for sexuality. Mm -hmm. But uh, from, my, from where I stand, I think that I would like to see anybody and everybody come to the church for help, yeah. whether you're a homosexual, murderer, um, because that's what we're there to do. Um, Jesus helped people that had done stuff, okay? Um, we, we don't condone. Um, be, and, and this is standing on a biblical base. We don't condone homosexuality, right. but we don't drive homosexuals away. Uh, and, and we will um, do as much as we can to minister to them. But you will never have a homosexual marriage in this church. Um, okay. You said hip hypocrisy was another thing that you said. Yes, um, I feel like some people say that I guess in the media, there have been a lot of um, church leaders who preach about you know, being a righteous Christian, but down the line something happens, happens. and they're in the, the media, you know, no, heaven's I, I in think, themselves. I think, and I, I remember when I was a child, I was about nine or ten, when my father took me to a church, a big Anglican church, and the bishop was preaching that evening. And the bishop said, do as I say not as I do. And I knew there was something wrong with that. I think one of the most important things for not just preachers, but every Christian is to be exemplary right. in, in the way that you, in, in the things that you preach, do lead by example. Um, yes, there is hypocrisy in the church mm -hmm. because uh, our constitution, and I believe rightly so, allows for the freedom of worship, which means that anybody can say, follow me, I'm worshipping God, and they're not really worshipping God, they're right. just fraudsters. Right. Um, so it's very difficult to check that. But, you know, I, I think that, yes, people are gullible, but when they find that there's something inconsistent about what they're being told with what they're seeing, they should vote to their feet. Okay? So there, there will be hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. um, don't stay in the church where you begin to sense that there's hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. Leave. Um, some people say the church is filled with leaders who function like CEOs. You know, they desire power, they desire control. Um, how can one dispel that stereotype? Well, I believe that Christianity is not a religion. Christianity is a relationship. Every single Christian is expected to have a personal relationship with God. So. Um, if the pastor wants to be a CEO, that's up to him. If you have a relationship with God, God speaks to you 
and you you know whether he is uh, um, whether whether he is right or he is wrong. Um, Jesus was never a CEO. He, his his mission statement said, "I came not to be served, but to serve." And if Jesus did that, then that is incumbent on all people who lead churches to be servant leaders, not uh, ruler leaders. So let's talk about the benefits of the church. What are some of the, the benefits? Well, one of the benefits, uh, and I think this is one of the most obvious benefits, is when you become a part of the church, your destiny is no longer hell, mm -hmm. but heaven. Okay? Um, and you, you can walk on earth with an assurance that you are actually seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Um, your, your whole life can change by what you believe um, uh, and you begin to see things happening in your life because of what you believe. If you believe Jesus at his word, if you can take him at his word, your life will change. I, I, I am not into saying you're going to have prosperity, okay. but hey, you will learn to be content with wherever you are. You will learn to, um, to, to, ab to abound and then you'll also learn to be abased. You'll learn to be able to cope with lean times and then not become arrogant when times are good. You know, I think those are, those are some of the benefits. There are lots and lots and lots of benefits of Christianity. I think, for me, um, I'm just a whole different person. Yeah. I used to be somebody that if somebody crossed, crossed me on the road <laughs> as I was driving along, I would rain curses on them. Um, this was going to be at least 30 years ago. But, you know, I found that... that I feel for people. What are the differences that you have found between this generation and your generation? Woo! <laughs> I grew up thinking that sailors wore tattoos. Yes. I see all kinds of people with tattoos now. I hope none of you has tattoos. <laughs> I saw people have rings in, on, in their tongue. You know, boy. Um, the, 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 that's the outward manifestation of this generation. The, the challenge now is, is that how does this generation think? Your generation. And, and, you know, I find I've talked to some people and because they've not ex been exposed in, in these times to things like to honesty, um, it's very difficult to, for them to tell between right and wrong. Yes. You know? So there's, there's lots that, that I think have gone wrong with this. I know um, I've experienced or I've encountered people who say they believe in Jesus, but they don't believe in the church, the structure of the church. Well, Jesus is the body of Christ, yeah. which is the church. You know? but, <laughs> but, but they but don't want to come to church. I, I think what the church has presented has been something totally different to what it should be, and that's why people run away from the church. There's a particular um, quote that I heard that I really like, which is that the, ho the church is a hospital for the sick and not a museum for the holy or righteous okay. and I think that's the perception for this generation they feel you know you have to be all righteous to be in the church and maybe that's the way the church has presented itself it's however if you look at in terms of Jesus Jesus hung out with the tax collectors the prostitutes you know so I think the church needs to do a lot of work in making sure people feel you know, it's okay to come to church as you are but the thing is, when you get to chat, then they help you to move away from who you are to who you should be or who you want to be. You know, the church will help you. So if you're struggling, if you're a homosexual or, you know, you, you can come to church and say, hey, this is how this is what I'm feeling. You know, I need help. And then there's a process that would help you, you know. Be, be, becoming a Christian is something that happens from the inside to the out. Jesus said, come as you are. Okay, so if you, if you 
go to Jesus as you are, then he changes you from the inside and he does the changing, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So I, I agree with you entirely that um, the church shouldn't present itself as, as uh, a place where righteous people go. Really, God's purpose for the church is to equip the people in the church and then send them out into all the different areas of life. Not just to tell people about Jesus and bring them to the saving knowledge of Jesus, but to transform society, to, to have society walk according to godly principles. Can we talk about um, social media and the impact social media has had on our generation, for example? Okay, this is a... This is a, a, a um, social media is very big in um, this generation. You find that everybody's on social media. Um, that's now it's Even not... Even while they're at the dining table. Exactly. Yeah. So relationships are based on social media. So even a uh, husband and wife, the husband may have traveled and you find that they're chatting via BBM and WhatsApp and they may not have even spoken on the phone, you know, for over a week. And you find that even with friendships as well. And I mean, it's an amazing tool because you can connect. But it's got its downside. But it's got its downside. So for instance, the other day I was on Twitter and I tweeted at um, TD Jakes. I asked him a question, controversial, controversial question, and he replied, and you know, in a couple of years back, 15 years ago, that wouldn't have been possible. So I don't have to know someone that knows someone that knows TD Jakes. I can just, you know, send him a message and he would reply. You know, so it's Are you good. sure he replied? He was. He replied. I think it's him. I believe he's the one that um, <laughs> is in control of yes, his I, account. I can imagine how many <laughs> tweets hit his account every day. Sure. Um, but at the same time, you find that there's a lot of negative content out there. So you find that, and then there's no age restriction. So a 10-year-old, 12-year-old can access the same things as a 30 or 35-year-old. And there's no way to restrict that content. So a 10-year-old can see what a 35-year-old is seeing. And so that's where I think there's a problem in terms of the content. So there is a lot of negative content out there. So I think the church has a lot of work to do to begin to see that, look, it's not about traditional media per se anymore. The church needs, we need, we need to have Twitter pastors. We need to have social media pastors where you go online and then you can reach out. So you find that there are different conversations. People that want to commit suicide, sometimes they tweet and they say, I'm about to, you know. So there needs to be a mechanism where the church is constantly on this platform so that they can, um, they can fish out these kind of situations and then they can provide, you know, counseling, you can provide help. So the church needs to, every church needs to establish a social media platform. And I'm excited with um, GLA. You know, we have, we're on Twitter, we're on Facebook. We also have a website that we're about to launch, which is um, going to be very, very interactive. So more churches need to, you know, get on there and make sure there's access to information. I think that the ideal, in the ideal situation, the church actually should be able to set the standards. Yes. Um, okay. Welcome back to the House of Matter, where we've been talking to Omidala Shikoya and Susan Abebe. Um, and, and as we bring this episode to an end, one of the main um, objectives of the heart of the matter is to see the transformation of our nation, Nigeria. And, and so, um, just talking about Nigeria, I mean, I, I know I've seen a Nigeria that you didn't get the opportunity to see. Um, I saw a Nigeria when people could turn on a tap in any part of Lagos and they got water. Um, so, just looking at Nigeria, I see a country that has such huge potential. We've got natural resources and, and, and our eyes have sort of been, been um, uh, blink, blinkered because of the oil. Um, we've got all sorts of natural resources and our greatest resource actually is the Nigerian people. Um, and, and if we can harness our resources, if, I, I think we need a whole reorientation. Um, our, our, the, the mindset has to change. Um, what are your thoughts? Let me start with Omi. What are your thoughts on how we can get out of, let, let, let me say, this mess that Nigeria has become? I think 
the different um, phases to the Nigerian problem. I like to talk about the economy and I think um, the solution to our problems and how to eradicate poverty, um, I think entrepreneurship is going to play a very major role. Um, for instance, there's a study that says 95% um, of the world's population are employees and they only own 5% of the world's wealth. However, the 5% who are entrepreneurs own 95% of the world's wealth. I think we need to stop looking to government to provide or create jobs. There, there are, not everyone can be an entrepreneur, so for those that can, you know, start something and you'll be able to employ people, you'll be able to create jobs. Um, that's what was the driver for America. Um, you had the likes of Henry Ford, um, sorry, Bill Gates, Steve Jobs. Um, so I think there's, there's that a lot of people need to, we need to st begin to see the problems as opportunities. Now, I grew up in an environment where parents did pass values on to their children. But it, I don't think it's happening anymore. Why would that be? I think um, our parents, well, we're being raised um, to put financial prosperity before love. Okay. <laughs> That's how I feel. So I, I just think, you know, love just... Could time be a factor as well? I mean, it seems to me as if parents don't have as much time yes. for their children as yes. they did in, in, in my generation. I agree. I mean, that's um, just to add to what Susan is saying, is that now everyone's looking at financial prosperity. So mothers are working um, all hours. Mothers have to work nowadays because fathers can't earn enough to... Enough, yeah. So both parents are out working to be able to provide for the family. And then you find that children are left on their own either with the nannies or they're in daycare but you know we, yes as much as we're trying to <clears throat> you know provide for our children what children really want is love and that's why you find out that even those in in poverty as long as they have their parents they're still very happy yes. you know so sometimes we need to prioritize and you know they're seasoned so you need something you need to sometimes make some sacrifices to be able to provide for it because what they need most is love not necessarily so much money so you find that because parents don't have the time then they're splashing money out on their children and then the children are left to find out about life themselves I remember somebody came recently and said you've got to eat that frog do you remember yes um, Brian Tracy yeah and, and what he was talking about was prioritizing Mm. that you know um, sometimes your top priority is not so desirable it's a frog mm. but you still have to eat that frog mm. you've got to get a, a, a set of priorities and do them yeah. it's been fun on this sixth year uh, this episode marking our sixth year of the heart of the matter our 150 something uh, episode and um, I hope you've enjoyed it and from now on you will enjoy presenting and hosting the heart of the matter. Okay. Viewers, as the heart of the matter evolves, we look to you to stay tuned and learn whatever we, we are able to bring to you. And also, we're happy to get feedback from you so that we know what we can do to improve the program or to talk about subjects that you want us to talk about. We'll be back again next week with another episode of the Heart of the Matter. Until then, stay blessed.